Hey Cadillac fans, Daniel here. In this episode, we're installing the P3 vent gauge. Such a cool, stealthy gauge. We're gonna install it in the ATS. It also works in the CTS and the installation is very similar. I'm gonna show you how it's done. Keep watching. I really love the P3 gauge design. The first time I saw it, I was like, man, I really want one of those because it's stealthy. It fits right in the vent like this. It looks OEM. You know, having these big round gauges like up on the upper vent, they really stick out. They're easy to see, that's nice, but boy, everybody can see them and sometimes they don't look so nice. There's a couple that are okay out there, but the P3 vent gauge, it goes right there. I love that. Now there is one little problem with it. It is a little hard to see like, in your direct view. You know, you have to move your head to see it, move your hand away from the steering wheel to see it. That's a problem. But if you just need to monitor things, check the peak temperatures on some things, it's gonna be absolutely fine. And you know what? Having that stealthy look is kind of worth it. There's other gauges out there that are gonna be more in your face. And if you're really worried about monitoring things close up while you're driving, you might want one of those, but you gotta decide. You can't have it all, I guess. This gauge is great because it's gonna monitor all your important parameters, the speeds, temperatures, throttle position, the intercooler before and after temps, and most importantly for the owner Rob here, he wants to see his ethanol content and it's gonna show that because he's got the uh, ethanol sensor installed. It also has cool features like zero to 60, 60 to 130 times. I think that's really awesome. If you just wanna play around on the street, you don't wanna pull out maybe your draggy or something, or if you don't have that set up with like the PDRs on your car. The installation is pretty simple. We just got to remove the vent. Uh, we're going to remove a couple of slats and put the gauge in and then just run a couple cables over to the OBD2 port. There's not much more to do unless you've got external sensors, then you got to splice those in and of course wire them up. Things like your wideband O2 sensor or something like that, or if you have auxiliary, you know, map boost sensors, whatever. But for Rob here, he's already got his ethanol wired into the OBD and that's really all I need. So this is going to go pretty quick. And there's uh, some awesome pictures out there. There's a forum post by Mike. Thanks, Mike, it helped us make this video easier, but nothing quite says it like video. I'm gonna show you exactly how you're gonna remove uh, the gauge and the little vent slats and how to cut them and install them. It's pretty easy, just take your time. I think you can do it. Let's get started. Here's what you're gonna get in the box with your P3 gauge. You'll get the gauge and ribbon cable, the control box, and the OBD2 plug along with a little manual. This CTS gauge is almost the same, but I believe it's a different part number and any differences in the install, I'm going to highlight in the video. We'll be working with the left side gauge in your car. That's where it's meant to be installed. We just need to remove this plastic panel that is a cover for the fuses. Just use a plastic trim tool, but I'm using my new metal skin tool. I really love this, it's my go-to. I'll have a link for it down in the description as well as plastic trim tools. We did remove this trim, do not do that. It is not required on either of the cars. However, you do need to remove these three screws on the ATS or the four screws on the CTS that are all seven millimeter hex. The bottom one's gonna allow you to loosen the heads up display control panel. Just give it a tug and there's metal clips holding it on the left and right side of the panel. Now there's one hidden seven millimeter screw on the ATS right here. The CTS does not have this. Oops, I dropped it. Had to fish it out later with the magnet. Now gently lift these bits of plastic over the tabs that are there and then pull the vent straight out. It's held in with some metal clips again. Now that you have that out, we need to remove the actual vent portion away from the assembly. There's four T25 Torx screws. Remove those screws and it comes right apart. Next, we need to remove the vent slats from the vent. There are two little tabs here. I'm using a small Phillips head screwdriver to sort of poke those tabs and that'll allow the vents to loosen on that side. I did have to work it a little bit with the screwdriver. Once that's loose, the other side of the vent slats are just pressed in. So just give them a good tug and they will pop out of their little sockets. Here's the little sockets close up. 
and here's the holes that they went into. It's as simple as that. Next, we need to remove the center slat from this little bracket on the right side. I removed all the slats from the bracket, but in the end, this is what it should look like. You should have the top and bottom slats on a bracket and the middle slat all by itself. The next step is for the ATS only. On the ATS, you gotta trim this little circle. You'll see it in the instructions from P3. You just need to flatten out one side, the lower half. So how are you gonna do that? Well, I do have a Dremel tool and I just picked a random grinding wheel and went at it. Just be careful not to slip and hit other parts of the plastic and make sure you don't grind off too much. I did it a little at a time until I was happy with it. If you don't have a Dremel, you could of course use a file. And I think Mike just used a hot soldering iron to melt it down in his Facebook post. Once that's complete, just put the center slat now in the lowest slat position and it should fit right in. Same with the CTS, you don't have to grind it down, but the center slat moves to the bottom and you wanna make sure the silver handle actuates the vertical slats. It's not actuating it here, but later we adjusted it. Next, you wanna route the ribbon cable through the far left slat. It almost feels like it's not gonna fit, but it will. And you might wanna make sure it's turned the right way so that the cable is not unusually stressed from the gauge. The gauge display has two little tabs that fit into those left top two holes on the vent. On the CTS, one person complained that they had to sort of adjust the size of these holes to make it fit right, but on ours, it fit perfectly. And don't forget to reattach the vent to the trim assembly with those four T25 Torx bits. I probably should have done that at the workbench, but we're doing it now. And then we can install the vent again. Note how we position the ribbon cable like this. It's funny, they said to do it like this on the ATS, but for the CTS, they say to lift some of the foam and route it underneath the foam like this. Folks, I'm not sure it really matters too much. I'll let you pick how you want to do it. Putting the vent assembly back in is pretty straightforward. Just line it up, get it tucked under the upper trim and the heads up display control, and it just pops into place with those metal clips. Route the ribbon cable through the dash down to where the OBD2 port is. You can do this in whichever way you like. Just make sure the cable is not gonna rattle around or get caught on anything. There's not much that can go wrong here, honestly. Let's put those seven millimeter screws back in place to hold the vent. There's these two on the sides, and then there's the one hidden one under the vent on the ATS. And after you've done that, you can snap in the heads up display control on the left and right side. And don't forget the seven millimeter screw on the left or the second one on the CTS. Plug in the ribbon cable to the control box, and then plug in the other cable to the other end of the control box. You can't get it wrong. There are some ends on that to go to other sensors if you have that custom setup, and if you do, I'll leave that to you. Otherwise, there's the OBD2 plug, and that plugs into the port on the bottom left side of your dash. And that's it. But we don't want wires hanging out like this, so let's uh, bundle them up nicely, and we'll tuck them up under the dash. I'm gonna remove this screw here on the left side. It's a seven millimeter. It's gonna give me a little more flexibility at moving some wires around. And if you need even more room, just pull a little harder and the bottom panel will unclip. And if you need even more room, well, there's one screw here and then remove this knee panel on the right side. But on the CTS, there is no panel. You'll just need to pull the carpet down and there won't be a screw right here like there is on the ATS. Now you can pull that lower panel out all the way if you like. I'm just gonna bundle up the wires nice and clean and zip tie them to the control box and then tuck them in right here where this little white felt pad is. They'll be fine there. If there's any rattles, we'll have to make adjustments later. Now on the CTS, somebody did install the control box like this, and that's a really clean install. You might look into that. Once your wires are tucked, just plug in the OBD2 plug, but Rob wants to run the P3 gauge and his little Bluetooth OBD2 transmitter so he can use like the Torque Pro app on his phone or HP tuners. So we're gonna install this splitter. I'll have him tuck the wires and then we put a little bit of sticky Velcro on the transmitter and mounted it here. It seems to be out of the way of his feet. I would say this came out to be a pretty clean install.
All right, we'll finish by putting the two screws back in on the right side. We'll put this knee panel back in on the right, the seven millimeter screw on the left side, and finish things off by putting the fuse panel cover back in place and test out our gauge. The vent gauge looks great. You press and hold the right hand button and it can dim it if you want. And then I wanted to see how was the airflow? Well, once I made some adjustments, I was really surprised with how much air was still coming out of that slot. There's definitely no reason for me to show you how to operate the gauge and all of its settings. P3 did an excellent job in their video found on their website, along with this big long page with all the specifics on how to use it. After a couple of weeks overall, the gauges worked fine for Rob except for boost. He says the boost never matches his cluster and he's worked with P3 and they can't quite resolve it. Other people have told me that they also have had this issue, but most honestly don't care because they're mostly using the gauge just to monitor ethanol content and their manifold air temps. Mike, who made the Facebook post, also had an issue where it wasn't compatible with a splitter and the Aeroforce gauge. He said it tended to cause the P3 gauge to turn on and off randomly. All right, that's installing the P3 vent gauge. I love it. It went, it was really well designed. I mean, it fit together just right after shaving that one part off. Uh, it, it just worked. I mean, I've seen other products that don't just go so well. They've definitely engineered this one well, and I really love it. Unfortunately, yeah, a little hard to see, but man, that's definitely my style, and I think Rob is gonna love it. Uh, so if you appreciated this video, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel. Uh, consider subscribing and hitting the bell for more Cadillac content. Thanks so much for watching the Jeff Yolen channel. We'll see you next time.